Kathy Barry Green has been doing nonviolent direct action for over 25 years with such organizations as Earth First, Students for a Free Tibet, um, anti nuclear work, and also as a trainer for the Ruckus Society. Um, she's taught his, uh, history in the inner city from a radical perspective or point of view. Um, she's been active with Facilitation Working Group in Occupy. Um, she's a pro professional photographer, and she's really cool. So here's Kathy. I feel like nothing like the loaded diversity of tactics discussion um, has come down on my head. I'm really actually excited about that because the way I look at it is the whole realm of diversity of tactics is way bigger than this like property destruction versus not property destruction, violence versus nonviolence. Um, like Alex said in my introduction, I have been a trainer with the Ruckus Society for many years. I specialize in blockade trainings. I've been a long-term Earth Firster with the belief in deep ecology. And I also have been really instrumental at the beginning part of Occupy with a lot of the facilitation for a lot of my life and work kind of tore me into a bunch of different directions. And one of the things that I keep hearing people talk about is what people are standing for and what they believe in and what is nonviolence, what is our strategy. And so the first thing I want to say is I don't speak for anybody or any other organization, um, even groups that I've worked with. I just represent myself. And Working with stuff with uh, direct action for 25 years, I've done a lot of different kinds of actions. Um, and I always say that I believe in nonviolent civil disobedience. I don't just say I believe in nonviolence because that's kind of, um, I actually know David Solnit and I worked as well on organizing stuff for Seattle. And one of the things that he talks about is that nonviolence comes from this like just negative, what you're against. And I always believe in nonviolent civil disobedience. But that does not mean that the whole, uh, I don't know, the whole philosophy that I stand by is always just a belief in nonviolence. And I feel that for transparency's sake, that's really important for people to know. I do support groups like the Zapatistas. I do support groups like the Plowshares who do property destruction. I do believe in monkey wrenching as an earth firster. I have supported in the past Earth Liberation Front, the Animal Liberation Front. I fully believe in a various, huge diversity of tactics. As a blockade, instructor or you know trainer I get the the office I get the whole kind of concept that a lot of times people get when people think that you're too radical um, sometimes you do protests and people think that my you know lock boxes and my 1500 pound barrels of cement are really scary and that that's going to you know bring things to a different level and it does bring things to a different level because I do believe that there are many ways to protest and many ways to be effective um, and I believe that everybody has their right to do what, where they are, to be where they are in their own point of view. This is really hard for me to talk into that thing. Um, and so as a blockade trainer, I've had a lot of negativity thrown at me because I've said, people have said I've been too disruptive to their protest. Um, or, you know, that we're not having the same kind of goals or this isn't safe for people to all come out to because the police are going to show up. And so one of the things that I really invite everybody in this room to kind of go inside yourself and just kind of have this belief that everybody's tactics are their own tactics. And you can't speak for what somebody else's tactics are or aren't. And that's on both sides. Because, you know, people have this huge economy between liberal and radical. And like I say in my blockade trains, and I did one here, I talk about radical means from the root. So it's where you stand from. And somebody that may have written their first letter to the government as a protest is pretty radical in their mindset. Somebody who you know, may stand in you know, southern Mexico with the Zapatistas, that's radical in their mindset. And so it all depends on where you are and where you're coming from. And one of the things I really hope that we can come out of this and ongoing discussions is just this kind of belief that we all have a respect for each other and what each other is doing and how they feel. Um, so as an Earth Firster, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Earth First. <laughs> so, you know, this guy by the name of, you know, Abby wrote this little book called The Monkey Wrench Gang, and, you know, it all kind of went from there. And Earth First started out as a pretty male-dominated, you know, organization. And I was one of the first pretty, you know, pretty outspoken, really radical women that had joined Earth First. Um, and, you know, there was definitely this lot of clash of where people were coming from. And one of the things that, you know, we're supposed to talk about is our own experiences. Well, some of my experiences I'm just not going to stand up here in a public forum and speak about. Um, and I hope people understand that um, and understand why. And one of the things that I do want to talk about, though, 
under diversity of tactics is strategic use of diversity of tactics. So I wrote some notes. Okay. So, excuse my my reading. Um, so, as I said, I believe that the diversity of tactics is a really loaded statement. It means many things to different people. And I'm not against a diversity of tactics on all different kinds of levels. I'm against unstrategic use of diversity of tactics, things that are not meant to move something forward. Um, I want a true revolution. And I truly want to build a place where people can all come together. And I realize that not everybody is on the same wavelength and on the same level. And if you did a spectrogram, even in this room, of like what diversity tactics A even meant and what your beliefs are when it came to diversity of tactics, so we'd be all over the place. And I think that's really cool. I think that's one of our greatest strengths. And that was what made uh, Seattle so successful. What didn't make Seattle so successful, in my eye, was a bunch of Starbucks windows that got broken. Not my choice, right? Not where I would have stood, not what I wanted to do. The reason I didn't stand behind that in that case was because I was in charge of the blockade. I was in charge of people who had their arms locked into 1,500 pounds of cement and couldn't get up and run away when the police came. And that, to me, is the mindset. That's the strategy. That's the, what are your actions doing that is affecting everybody else that's around you. That's the also where I look at where issues like race, um, gender, LGBTQ, certain people are at greater risks for having a greater repression. And when you have various tactics that aren't thought out and aren't kind of like the mindset of the group as a whole, then you're putting different people at risk at different levels. And they may not have invited that risk. And I fully believe that people always should have the power within themselves to decide what risk they want to take. I don't ever believe that somebody else has that right to make for me, just like I don't think somebody has the right to say I'm not radical enough if I'm not doing something that they feel I should be doing. And that's where it all comes to this respect issue. Um, I think that um, one of the things that I have found that I get the most concerned about when we talk about diversity of tactics, it always comes down to property destruction versus not property destruction. My God, we're not going to start a revolution and really change this country by just throwing a uh, brick in the Starbucks. That's really not going to change it. True revolution is going to take a lot, though. We are not living in a society that's run under a dictatorship, and if we were, I think we'd see a whole lot of difference in our mindsets and our beliefs. And I think that someday when people do start to come together, they're going to have to think in a different version. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the place that's called Big Mountain. Anybody ever hear of Big Mountain? Big Mountain is in Arizona. It's on the Diné Reservation. Um, Peabody Coal has dis you know, discovered coal, all kinds of natural resources they try to steal. Well, you know, I really support these gun-toting grandmas that live up there. Right? They are keeping everybody off their land, and they're doing what they need to do for their own sake. Right? When I go there and I show my support, I heard sheep. I don't know anything about sheep, but I'm not the gun-toting grandma that's up there. But I'm there to do what I can to support them and their movement. Um, it's just like when I lived in Austin and the whole revolution for the Zapatistas came about. It's really important to be able to show the support work that you want to do for these different movements, you know, issues that are going on in Palestine. We all know, you know, what happens in those kind of uh, situations. Um, and so one of the things I really want people to talk about or think about is if your, what you're doing in your diversity of tactics outweighs any negative. If you fully believe what you're going to do is like a plowshare. How many of you know what the plowshares are? Excellent. So one of the things about the plowshares is they always take the responsibility. So part of their action is the jail sentence, is keeping all the motion going. And whenever you're going to do a different tactic, you have to look at does it outweigh the consequences. And you have to look at that from your own individual, and you have to look at that from a movement building. But if nothing else, and I know we'll talk about this a lot later, we have to learn how to respect each other's tactics. And we have to learn how to do it strategically and how to do what tactic when. And one thing that we really need from Occ and Occupy is we need a strategic plan, right? Because then you'll know when things are important and how you have to step things up. 